I was writing first. You know, that's always such a good way in, uh, is through writing, because, you know, once you've written the script, it's har much harder to get rid of you as a director. I think the reason I got my foot in the door was because of Roger Corman, and I think that's the only reason. I had acted in a movie for Roger Corman, and so I knew him a little bit, and I kind of knew his habits. I knew when he went to lunch, and so basically I stalked him until he let me do the movie. I parked my car around the corner, and I could see him get up from his desk through the window. He had this big picture window, and so I ran around the block to accidentally run into him, and I go, oh, Roger, wow, what a coincidence seeing you. And I had such a great time on this movie. And, and I, just, I, I did surprise him. I stood out because I shot second unit on a movie that I acted in. Um, he sent me to Argentina to be in this movie. Uh, and I helped out um, somewhat. And so he got word back that, that I was very helpful to the production. And, so um, he, he remembered, and I said, I've got this great idea for a movie, and it's about strippers. And, I got, and here's the poster. It's going to be this girl on a pole, and you can't believe it. They swing around this pole, and it's just amazing. And he went, come in Monday morning and pitch me the idea. I think that the reason my movies seem to be different um, than other horror movies is because I really come from a point of story and character. Um, characters first, you know, and the stories first, and the horror elements kind of come in as a secondary thing. Um, they support the story and they support the character. But the, the great thing about horror is, though, um, it's so cinematic. It gives you license to tell the story in a really visual way. Like, for example, in Carrie 2, when I go to black and white and then start zooming in really fast, you can't do stuff like that in, in, a, in a straight drama and have it make any sense. Then it becomes laughable. But in the case of Carrie 2, it really helped tell the story. You know, that's the big challenge for actors, is to be able to laugh, cry, scream, and get angry, you know, all that stuff. Th those are the things that actors really um, are challenged to do and want to be able to do, and want to be able to do on the spur of the moment when the pressure's on. So um, I think horror is fantastic in that way. I mean, just artistically. And then, of course, the opportunities that come um, for actors in the horror genre is really great, too. Because oftentimes, um, you know, it it's, can be lower budget. And when it is lower budget, the, they will cast people who are not names. So there can be a really good opportunity there. I don't really think nudity matters. It doesn't, maybe it's because I, I'm old or I'm not, I'm not sure, but um, I don't connect nudity with, in, with exploitation anymore. And I think it's what it evokes in you. It's what it evokes in the viewer. And um, when I watch a horror movie, generally, I don't find that uh, being evoked. But I'm sure I could if it really felt that it was exploitive in that way and it was taking advantage of the vulnerability of women. But, um, you know, there have been so many great horror, like Ginger Snaps, that are feminist. I think horror fans are just great. I think they're unlike any other kind of fan. How so? Just because they're so passionate about it. Um, and they're usually just such sweet people who are attracted to horror. And I found this also because I'm friends with many, many horror directors, very famous horror directors, and they are the sweetest people, too. It's really interesting. I mean, sweeter than the average person. So, um, I guess they're getting out all their uh, anxieties and fears and uh, anger, whatever it is. They're getting it out in their work, and it's and they're pretty pure and happy and uh, you know expanded as people. I think that's really true. Yeah.